right in. Thank you. Good morning, Willie. We wanted to stop this man in this hall full of all kinds of electric powered things here at Aero 2018 in Friedrichshafen, Germany. This is Willie Taki. I'm Dan Johnson. And it's hard to say all what Willie does because he does a lot. But he is a publisher, probably at first, of your many activities. And you published something about electric aircraft, probably more knowledgeable than anyone in the space. And you have helped organize this whole hall here. So we had to flag you down as you zoom around on your electric skateboard in the electric hall and ask you about some of these exhibitors here. We're standing right in front of the Siemens space, which is a large space full of all kinds of color-coded aircraft in their company colors, I guess. What's going on here, Willie? Yeah, so Siemens, they started with electric aircraft some five, six years ago. Uh, they even had the first project uh, in the end of the 90s, uh, and they now have dedicated an own uh, company Siemens e-aircraft for electric flying and they have the goal that by 2030 there will be airliners with uh, commuter aircraft with up to 50 aircraft, uh, 50 persons flying electric and mainly hybrid electric. But for achieving this goal they know they have to start with small aircraft and for this uh, they started with all these nice things and they developed motors, world record motors, like there is one motor with only 50 kilograms and uh, 250 kilowatts uh, power and there are this year the newest thing they announced is the charging system plus the hybrid version of the E-Fusion, which is uh, actually a light sport aircraft which has been converted into fully electric and now hybrid electric. Well, I don't know who expected that someday Siemens, which is a very large multi-billion euro company uh, doing many, many things in the electric space, but a few years ago, who would have thought they might provide the propulsion for an airliner? Uh, uh, they evidently knew this, but most people would go, no, 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 it's going to be some company that makes jet engines. But that's changing. All right, so there's many spaces in here, Willie. Let's go look at a couple of the other interesting ones that we've got. So now we're in front of another what I would call a light sport aircraft, and I know this Phoenix motor glider, but with, an elect uh, with a, a gasoline engine. Again, that's changed. Yeah, that's changed, and it has been flying as electric already some while ago, and then it's called Phoenix instead of Phoenix. They changed ah, the, they made the e, e, a big part the of big it. E. Everything uh, in this hall is E, e something. That's why yeah. it's called the E Flight Expo. And the E Flight Journal that you're yes. going to tell us about later. And uh, th this now, they, uh, the, the manufacturer of Phoenix Aircraft, he now partnered with MGM Compro and with two or three other partners to get a uh, whole system together because an electric aircraft doesn't help you if you don't have charging stations on the airfields. Ah, so, okay, and that's uh, the purpose for the, uh, for the Onyx Pure Flight. The Onyx Pure Flight is a whole ecosystem for the electric aircraft. Ah, I see. And they are setting up charging station on several Czech aircraft in the beginning, and they later want to do it in other airfields. So I think so that you fly your airplane to another, you fly your electric airplane to another field in that charging station that looks like a gas pump back there allows you to continue on. And they already have the support of several governments, several local governments that they would set up the stations so that you can move around with the aircraft. There is a very similar project of a flight school in Switzerland which want to run 10 flight schools with electric aircraft and last year it was announced this year this week they received the permit to fly so they can right? fly so it's getting somewhere because right now in Germany uh, and in Europe we have just changed the weight limit from 475 for ultralight aircraft which is this aircraft flying in up to 600 kilograms, like the LSA. Excellent. So now the aircraft with the batteries fit in, and so I expect many more flying next year. So this thing that you've been working diligently on, as well as all these developers, is now really beginning to happen in a practical and real way. Yes, and it's, it's at the right time, because technically they're getting ready, technically they are flying, there are about five, six, seven aircraft which have electric motor, which are flying, and now we have the category in which they can fly here in Europe because as you know in the United States up to now light sport aircraft is not allowed with ele electric with motors. We hope to change we hope that to change but it's, it. it is uh, right. still that way today, yes. And in Europe we expect 
January 1st, 2019, in a few countries, you can fly the 600 kilograms, and then these aircraft will fly as electric aircraft. That's exciting. That the, the light aircraft are leading the charge here. The space that Willie and I both operate in for so many years is at the leading edge of this thing. Let's go have a look at another one, Willie. Okay, let's go. All right, now we've changed position here. I recognize this aircraft as the Song, and we're continuing on down and looking down this space here. What, what are we looking at here, Willie? Uh, yeah, uh, we are in another booth from MGM Compro where we've been before, and this is one of the reasons why they will receive a prize, the E-Flight Expert Prize this year, because with their motor system and integration, they realized so many electric projects, not only one like the Phoenix we saw before, all these aircraft are powered by MGM Compro systems. Wow. And they have now, you see, when you say powered by, you're talking the electric motor yeah. and all the controller mechanisms yeah, and so forth. So a package uh, especially, arrangement. Yeah, they, they take the motor from another company uh, and then they uh, uh, integrate it into very different systems. Or actually, they are different motors, as you can imagine. Yeah, like there's a, a whole series of aircraft and here. The, so. uh, like a two-seater, two persons would need much more power than a single-seat low drag. But you see, they have, you have like rigid wings, hang gliders, you have uh, light gliders, which are foot launchable, and you have motor gliders. So it's a whole game, everything can be electrified. Okay. So all these airframes were already in existence, and they go to MGM Compro, and they and that company supplies the electric propulsion unit for these aircraft. The, the, the or actually, supplies a type of one that the, they pick. Exactly, the whole system actually, which is battery control, them, battery management, management, uh, charging control, because uh, in electric motors it's much more complex than with a combustion engine. As you can imagine, the decharging and the charge of the batteries has to be controlled all the time for not uh, destroying the battery and having things like this. Sure, yeah, I see that. So that's very helpful that a big company can help these small airframe producers create these new aircraft. Actually, actually, it's not that big. It's a small company, but very specialized. So you see there is a market for the Siemens, but also for the MGM Compros, which are small, medium-sized companies, which are very specialized. That's great. I love to hear small companies getting in the act as well. And here we've got one spinning up a little bit for us. Very interesting. Okay, you cannot you. hear that thing. Well, now we're in, in front of something completely different, Willie. What are we looking at here? This is not like the fixed wing aircraft we've been reviewing. No, it's not a fixed wing, not a gyro, not a uh, helicopter. It is yeah. something which is just uh, getting possible through electric. It's a multi-copter. You know this from the drones, but now they are getting more and more flying uh, electric man. There is uh, one which already s received uh, certifications, the Volocopter here in Germany. So not certification, but they a permit to fly. So they are flying already. This one is from France, uh, the Whisper. And uh, it is being shown first for the very first time last year here at the show. And now they are getting close to uh, getting it airborne. And we are lo really looking forward. And I bet we'll see many more of this. So for I think we will, Willie. And what's interesting to me, that I don't know if all our viewers recognize this, but there's a joystick in there. This is not get in, hit some buttons of destination, and it flies you there automatically. This is an owner or operator flown aircraft, correct? Yes, but still it will be, as it's a very complex drive unit. You, you may imagine you can steer eight props by hand. So. There is a computer control, but it's the pilot who gives in the uh, input by the joystick where to go, what to go, and sure. And but you're not just a passenger. You no. actually decide this by flying. It's it. a pilot air piloted aircraft, and it's optional. I think in a later time we will probably have an option. It sure will have some autopilot, but you always can fly it by hand, and I would bet for the next five to, let's say, eight years, everything will be like that. There must be a pilot input. Well, until the software is so robust that it can really do it completely automated, somebody told, described to me a knob that goes from manual to completely automatic. And, and you could have anything in between because it's just software at that point. And when the software is good enough, you could go to automatic and it'll take you somewhere without input. And it's actually exactly what, you do, uh, what you're saying. And uh, right now, which is interesting, also the big FAA, EASA, they are looking into this and trying to find a way how to work on it, to certify it. But as we know our certification authorities, <laughs> it'll take a while. <laughs>
Well, we hope they'll go fast because clearly this is moving quickly. It is, definitely. Let's go find another one. Okay. Well, Willie, now we've come to something completely different than everything else we've looked at. The diversity in this hall is tremendous. What are we looking at here, please? This is an interesting thing. It's a company, Lange, which has started with electric motor gliders more than 10 years ago. Wow. And they are the only one which have a certified motor glider, and they are selling it over 10 years, and uh, they sold nearly 100 pieces, wow. which are flying around the world. And now the company, since some time, because this aircraft are so ideal, also for flying a long time when you get it a, a better power source because the wing is so efficient they are now developed this research aircraft which has its world premiere here on the show ah, at the right? e-flight first Expo. time this has been seen then and this is to be meant to be flown with a fuel cell oh. because they were doing with some with the german dlr a research aircraft some time ago and now they developed the product out of it because you can imagine that uh, weather research centers they need this kind of aircraft which can stay in a yeah, this could stay up a lot. two or three days up in the two air. Two or three days at a time. Yes. Wow. And you see there are six electric motors which is another thing electric propulsion distributed electric propulsion is one of the key words where in future we will see many more aircraft because with a conventional aircraft you put a motor at some point in the aircraft normally in front where it disturbs the airflow and uh, you do it because it's a big motor. You have to find a big space. And you've and got to get fuel to it and everything else. And the else. center of gravity must be right. Yes. These electric motors, they weigh sometimes only several kilograms. So uh, you can put it at any place you want at the aircraft and we will see other designs where you see the advantage of this because like this you can create a much more efficient aircraft and if you have this much more efficient aircraft you can fly longer and you can even fly with the electric energy uh, for a certain while. Well, here's a product that would be very near and dear to me, probably to both of us, because it's a hang glider wing with a very minimal trike on it. This one is also for sale, but this has a special feature about it. It's available at a price you can afford. Yes, and, and it, it, you can afford, and uh, uh, you, it's packable very small, so you can stick it on the back of a car, you can, uh, the track and the wing on top, like we've done with our hang gliders all the time, and then you can go anywhere and you can fly with it. Package it's a complete aircraft. With your fuel, you in can a sense. fly. And if you once buy it, you don't have to buy fuel again. If you, and if you have a solar station, you even fly for, fly for free. Because some people have, a, like when you have a hangar or an RV, you have a solar panel on the roof, and then you fly for free, de definitely. Beautiful. And the, the thing is, the, the aircraft itself, it's manufactured in Ukraine from a quite well-known hang glider company, Eros, but they have experience with all different kinds. And they were doing motor trikes with combustion engine for a long time. So right now they changed to electric. And the interesting thing is last year here at the show, they sold four aircraft. Which is that is right? Very good. And some people bought, and even the German head of the Ultralight Association himself, who always was opponent to electric, <laughs> bought one and is now right? flying around electric. This so. is Joe Conrad from the DULV, which is uh, one of the organizations that approves aircraft like this on behalf of the government. Ah, exactly. And they're very supportive now for electric. So that's one of the other keys which we need to get this aircraft in the air. Another example of a changing world all around us and in this hall. Let's go find find yet another cool aircraft to look at. Okay, let's go. Well, talk about something completely different again now. What are we looking at this time, Willie? This is an electric aircraft, and the amazing thing is made in uh, the design, everything made in Israel. It should be ah. come a nine-seat fully electric aircraft with a range between 600 uh, nautical miles. Is that right? Fully electric. That's a large aircraft then. You can, uh, maybe the camera can't see, but there's a number of seats inside this little model and you can see the image of a larger aircraft back there. Propulsion on the end of each wing and on the end of the fuselage. I don't know if you can see all of that in the camera's view, but Really, this is a, a practical and real project that's coming yeah, for the future? Yeah, they are working on it and they, they have a lot of experience this company in drones, in electrical drones, ah. and the, the reason how the head of the company explained me how they can do it uh, is they say they are very efficient, very light structure, 
So more than 65% of the whole aircraft weight will be batteries. Ah, so this is a pure electric then, not a hybrid. It's a, it meant as a pure electric aircraft which has more than 600 miles range. Wow, that is a fantastic thing. And this is with battery technology we have today. It is, they say, 600 miles battery technology of today. Sure, they talk with battery manufacturers to get more out of it, and there will be, because the battery capacity is growing by 5% per year, so we can expect more coming, but they say we can do it today and they are working on it and they have a prototype uh, of a model which is I think 25% uh, or 30% which okay. is flying and they also achieve this by uh, the way, for example, of steering. Uh, they have, again, the distributed propulsion. Ah, ah, and okay. You don't need rudders which disturb the airflow. You can fly by, uh, steer the aircraft by the motors, sure. which gives you more Differential efficiency. Differential power, we call it in a conventional twin aircraft. Works exactly. really well here when it's out this far. Yes, and you can, like uh, this, as, as it's electric motors, they can even run backwards if you want. Now, I don't know if we identified the company, so please do that again. The company is Eviation, and the aircraft is going a leash. Elish. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm sure that you got another trick up your sleeve here for us in the electric hall of <laughs> okay, Aeros let's 20, go to the next 2018. One. All right, now something a little different yet again, a charging station, and obviously one that's portable for the airport use, is that right? That's right, and what we see in the background is the Alpha Electro, and this is the aircraft which is right now going to revolutionize flight training around the world, because they have just achieved for Switzerland, because this is a Swiss aircraft, ah. for and there are uh, is a group starting with ten electric aircraft on ten electric fields, uh, with a charger station, so that you can do even your country flying with the electric aircraft. Uh, but it also is working on EASA certification. It is working on uh, flying on LSA certification in Australia, and it's flying on a an, on an exemption in United States. There are five aircraft being delivered to United States. So very the Alpha elect, uh, the Alpha Trainer, which is gasoline powered as well, was designed for the training market. Now they've adopted it for this electric use. Yeah. And you said that they can go cross country in Switzerland because this one operation has ten different locations. Yes, they is that have, right? They have a so grid you fly from one to the next and charge they, it up. They and have go. a grid of charging stations already or in planning now, and uh, they're doing the same in California, where they want to have four stations, which is starting a bit smaller, and in Switzerland. Where the, uh, in France, where the French Aero Club uh, bought four of the aircraft and want to do the same, get the experience for the flight training around the country if and what you can do with an electric aircraft. So now we're looking at another trike, but there's something different about this particular one than some of the other ones we looked at. Yes. Will it help us understand what yes, that is? Uh, the thing with this trike is you probably see first it has a blue motor, ah, yes, uh, uh -huh. and the blue is uh, the company color of the uh, company Geiger, who Geiger, is one of the okay. pioneers of uh, electrifying uh, different kind of aircraft, it's fixed wing, trikes, and hang gliders. And this special one you see, the engine is bigger than on the other yes, side. Yes, this is quite a substantial motor on this. What does that mean? In Germany, we have a very popular thing in hang gliding, which is aero towing. Ah. And if you see the cable in yeah, here, sure. it's made for aero towing, and for this you need power because you want to pull up the hang glider, and that's why it has a special prop from the company Helix, a German company specialized on props of for electric aircraft. But it's still <laughs> a very small trike, so you have less drag, a lot of power, so you get in the aircraft, uh, the hang glider you want to tow in a very efficient way. All right, so there's a couple things going on here. I want to come back to the motor we just yeah. talked about, but we have a second motor here and a spool of what looks like Spectraline or some high-tech yeah. string, basically. Yeah, like I ex ma explained before, this is meant for towing. And what I learned here on the show, it's a new development, not only towing hang gliders, which would be the same speed than the towing trike, you also can tow uh, gliders, and you <laughs> even can tow paragliders with it, which is much more popular here in Europe, sure. flying paragliding. And but the paraglider, you would have the problem, it flies much slower. Ah, okay. So, because of this, you have the automatic winch, which will keep the uh, cord all the time tent. And ah. so, uh, when, you, when the glider is too slow, it just releases line, and then the trike flies in uh, curves, and the paraglider can take off. 
Now, this is a substantial motor, uh, and we're trying to get a grip on how powerful this is. It's got about 40 kilowatt, and with this, the trike without not that's something in, like 50 some horsepower. Yes, then. That's nearly a, 60, that's a ne lot nearly 60 a, horsepower. Yeah, okay. And it, it, it has one thing which is with the two battery packs you see there, uh, it achieves a climb rate of 6.5 meters per second. Wow, 1300 uh, feet a minute. That's, uh, that's, oh, that's steep, really, yeah, going up, really yeah. steep. Now that's not while towing. No, it's that's just, just the, air, just the if you just flew the aircraft but with this motor. Depending on the glider you're towing, you can cap up to climb rates over three meters. So, wow, okay. which is still uh, very six hundred feet a minute. That's while towing. That's still very substantial out of this. What looks like a small package. Yeah. And, and 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 so I see the two sets of batteries down here, and with this big motor and while towing. How efficient is it to use? How many tows can they do? They, they can do up to one hour towing and then they have to recharge or swap the batteries. So they say they can achieve up to 10 tows up to 600 meters and then they have to recharge or swap batteries. So I think it's really practical. It's lower noise than the one with the combustion engine. Sure. And uh, we have a lot of hangars in Germany with solar cells ah, on the roof. Yeah. So, so you almost free fly again for free. Then. Now there's still some more hang glider parts on this and people are going to say you're crazy, that's not a hang glider and the reason why I say that is I know the wings on this aircraft, I know them as a hang glider wing with a control bar and everything. I have not seen them mated to a, a, a sailplane type fuselage. Yeah, the thing is that's based on an air hang glider and we've seen it on the trike over there and uh, what it then the design of Felix Rühle, he uh, took two of his hang glider wings put them together, make a fuse lot and put <laughs> an electric motor in the front which gives him a nice motor glider, quite efficient and even you can disassemble and transport on a car. Wow, another one that you can transport on the car and in case the props look a little odd to you, it's just the way that they're uh, displayed here but they fold back to make for more efficiency. And you have to see, this has been in the air already, has been flying, and that's the first prototype. You ah. can be sure when it's going into production, it will not look much yes, nicer. Yes, sure, of course. This one was uh, quickly assembled because they were just flying it right before they got here, I understand. Right. Excellent. So here we've got a couple of interesting projects, and you notice we don't see an actual aircraft. Willie's going to explain this because they're both in uh, flight trials now, but what are we looking at here first, and then we'll back up a little bit and look at the one just to your left. So this one is the Egenius, which is a project uh, done by the University of Stuttgart at the Motor Glider, and it has been flying here. Actually, it was flying here to the show last year as a fully electric version. It has a range of more than 400 kilometers. Wow. So it was already crash crossing the Alps in the last years and everything, and right now they're converting it to a hybrid electric aircraft, so having more than a thousand kilometers range. Wow, and is that right? Okay, that's a lot of range. People always worry about that in electric aircraft, and they're beating that. No, and this is like two-seater, you can fly with it, and it could be available right now. So probably we will see even a manufacturer taking the idea of the university and starting to produce it. It is very efficient. You see they mounted the prop on the top of the... Yeah, it's fascinating back uh, here. That's uh, some really nice clean air for that and yet it doesn't disturb anything. Exactly. It's on the top of the rudder and these are things which you couldn't really do with a combustion yeah. engine. It's too heavy and all the center of gravity wouldn't fit anymore if you would do it. The interesting thing in this project is that the university on the base of this now developed as a, a four-seater and <laughs> as soon as the two-seater is flying with a hybrid they will work with a four on the four-seater and they are still looking for people investing in this but I think with all the hype for electric uh, mobility right now there is a good chance that we will see this flying soon. Excellent. Well, another genius idea from, uh, and in Europe here, it's very common to have universities work on these kinds of projects. Definitely. A good way to educate their students about what's coming, but also to break new barriers. Definitely is. And for example, last year there are students flying it over, flying it around the country and uh, still working on it. So the professor, who is an enthusiast as well, uh, he guides them, but they are Flying. The students are doing it. And most of the gliders actually, the glider production in Germany, which is the leading glider production in the world, is based, university based. They are all coming from the universities where they learn to design gliders and then later they make their own companies and build the gliders. Beautiful stuff.
Well, we have another attractive one here. If we can shift gears just a little bit now. This is different than this, but it shares one similarity. The uh, prop on the, the engine on the tail. Uh, and the interesting thing in this one is it's a seaplane. So it is uh, capable to land on takeoff on water and on land. But it's very, you see, very sleek, so it's very efficient, so they want to have it, or they will have it with quite high speeds. You can fly it, although the uh, uh, power is not that high, which is required for this. And they have the electric motor, and it's meant to be hybrid electric. So there will be uh, combustion and small combustion in the fuselage, and there will be batteries in the fuselage, and the motor is on the tail. And they showed the aircraft here for the last year for the first time, the real aircraft, and right now the aircraft is in Norway in test uh, testing. Roll tests and flight tests should be there by the end of summer. And next year they promise to be back here and perhaps even flying in the E-Flight show. Well, that would really be something. So it's not just a model, it's not just a dream. Uh, the full-size version of this is in Norway right now being test flown and it's, as we uh, it's, speak. It's not a mock-up. The full-size version is a real aircraft which can and will take off this summer. It's a very handsome aircraft all over with its boat hull down here. And I noticed this one, the uh, engine is directly in front of the tail. It's going to make the tail very effective as it works, but with nice clean air reaching the propeller unit. It definitely is, and the wings are relatively small, clean, and you see it doesn't have any additional floaters under the wing because it's a floating wing, so oh. it keeps the stability, so the drag is reduced. Normally, if you have the pontons mm. under the wings, sure, you got to have something uh, hanging uh, down out uh, here. It, it uh, gives drag and it makes the aircraft flow. So here, you got an efficient wing, and still it should be able. And they tested this in models, and it worked quite well. Well, now we're standing in front of another booth that says Smart Flyer Challenge. What's that about, Willie? The Smart Flyer Challenge is actually a flight show which uh, our Swiss colleagues have put up last year in summer, and they will do it again this summer. It was great because they had several electric aircraft coming there, flying. It's meant to be a fly-in. Sure, at this point where the range is not so big, not so many could fly in, especially at the weather we had there at the first time was not so good. But some came in flight and uh, then they were flying together and they had about uh, trikes, uh, electric hang gliders and uh, also fixed wing aircraft flying there. Wonderful, and this happens in Switzerland? This happens in Switzerland and will happen again this year in September. First weekend of September. Uh, so that's perfect and uh, I think so you still have a chance. You can go next year to E-Flight Expo, but even this year, if you have time, travel over to Switzerland in September, and you can see electric aircraft in the air. Not one, but several. All these marvelous machines we've been looking at with their brand new technology will be at the Smart Flyer Challenge in Switzerland. We have or many most of them, of them anyway. Ma and, most of them. Uh, All of them, like I said. The point is you get a variety you could observe actually operating under electric the propulsion. The thing is most of them are prototypes. So very often there is a prototype and when they do some special tests, sometimes they can't come to a fly-in. But I think they will have a good crowd because last year was a success, so normally next year is more. It's an overall sign to me of how information technology meets aviation. That's and we're seeing things in a whole new way that we've not seen for many, many years in aviation. It's very exciting. Yeah, and there is video coverage in YouTube over the SmartFly Challenge. So if you want to see how it was last year, just go to YouTube and you'll see it. All right, so coming up, the Smart Flyer Challenge. The dates are 1 and 2 September of this year, 2018. It's in the town of Grinchen, which is near Bern, Switzerland. And you can find more about that Smart Flyer Challenge at smartflyer.challenge.ch. Well, now we're at Bolocopter. Again, we don't have the actual aircraft here. It's out operating, I presume, but you see it in the background there where it's been flying. But describe again for us what Volocopter has achieved here with approvals. Yeah, it's very interesting because several years ago they appeared on our booth uh, with a gummy ball with some little electric motors 
which was the first manned multicopter flying. And from there they've gone a long way because now they have been flying, they've been automated flying, they achieved investment from, for example, large companies like Mercedes-Benz. Wow. And they had the boss of Intel flying the machine recently. Um, and uh, right now actually the prototype which is flying is over in the United States. So ah, it will right. fly there and you will he read about and hear about this in the news. So while the aircraft is off flying, what are these lovely young women here doing? Actually, the thing is, they are so far that they need more people. For really? realizing all their plans, they need more people. And so so you are recruiters then? Yes. Ah, <laughs> I see. Yeah. And so, so we see uh, it's become an industry. Electric flying is becoming an industry. And if you are studying an aeronautical engineer or you're just fascinated by electric flying, yes. Go to the website, go to volocopter.com and uh, look for jobs. And perhaps you're going to be flying an electric aircraft sooner than you think. Very cool. A couple of years ago when the actual aircraft was here, I was inside it and it's quite a comfortable flying machine. And I can't wait to get that opportunity myself sometime. <laughs> Well, we've gone around the hall here at A7 and all the E-Flight Expo exhibits and looked at many interesting aircraft. Now we're back at sort of the headquarters of this space. This is the Flying Pages booth or stand and also the E-Flight Journal. And that's what we see in this image behind us. But that looks sort of familiar based on the conversations we had. What am I looking at? Yeah, it's actually like a wrap up of what we're doing because we started with Siemens aircraft and it shows me flying the Siemens electric aircraft together with Frank Anton, the head of electric uh -huh. aircraft. And it shows us flying in Grenchen, where we, ah, what we meant. Where the Smart the Flyer Challenge occurred. Exactly. And uh, the E Flight Journal actually is something. I do different magazines around the world, like in Germany, in France, in China, and the directory, which is around the world in four languages. But we have so many information on electric aircraft, and I have a problem sticking it to a normal magazine, because the people who don't fly electric aircraft will complain and say, what about my aircraft? What about sure, my combustion sure, sure. engine? So you so created a journal just for electric? I created electric. a journal with friends who do are famous and enthusiastic just for electric aircraft. This is available in English only, and it's available for free in the internet, and at the shows like Oshkosh, like here, also as a printed version. And what we have with this magazine is, uh, you just have to go either to eflightjournal, e-flight-journal.com or you scan the QR code and you're that right there. And for the shows, we even have it in German, English and Chinese. Because there is a lot of Chinese interested people coming and investment coming for electric ah, aviation. Yes, right. So that's how it ties together. We have the American, which is the largest aviation market now, the Europeans, which are at the moment leading in the technology for the electric aircraft, and the Chinese who want it for the future and who are willing to finance it. Sounds like the right package, putting it all together here as you do with your other publications. List your publications for me. Yeah, what we have is uh, Flugel magazine, which is right next to it. Then. Uh, we have uh, the directory, which is a available in English, German, French, and Chinese. Uh, then we have a French magazine, Volmoteur, and then we have two smaller magazines for hang gliding and paragliding in France. And we have Flying China magazine, which is the only uh, general aviation magazine which exists in China right now. So he looks like a regular flying enthusiast, and he is an old hang glider pilot friend of mine, but also a publishing giant in the world of aviation and in the leading edge stuff that's happening. So thanks very much for talking with Willy Taki and myself here at Aero 20, 2018 in Friedrichshafen, Germany. You can find more about many of these kinds of aircraft, and I'll try and keep up with Willie as best I can on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Willie and I here at Aero 2018. Thanks for having me.